since the first time golden bullheads first appeared in ancient summer, or maybe even earlier than that, to the luxurious burial ceremonies of Egyptian pharaohs, mankind has always been obsessed with precious metals and stones, which led to the prosperity of some nations and the downfall of others. Mining the shiny valuables was a difficult task, yet transporting them was another great challenge. For millennia, bandits and pirates have always been the scourge of the land and the sea, although the cursed sea storms with vicious tides were the greatest punishment for the fragile wooden ships used for thousands of years before the Industrial Revolution. It is unimaginable how many ships from the coasts of Britannia to the Yellow Sea of China, probably tens of thousands, have been shattered and sunk into oblivion throughout the centuries. Not all, but some of them, have been carrying mind-boggling loots, resting in our world's deepest waters even to this day. There are also stories about buried treasures all across the world with hidden clues and maps pointing their locations. Today, I will share with you my list with the 5 greatest legendary treasures still waiting to be found. The Lost Spanish Treasure Fleet In 1715, Spain assembled a 12-ship fleet to transport huge chunk of the looted riches from their colonies in the New World. Unknown why, the captain of the fleet came up with the brilliant idea of waiting until the hurricane season before setting sail to Spain. The fleet was loaded with a fortune in gold, silver, pearls and emeralds which made it too slow to outrun a storm approaching it up the Florida Straits. From our own experience, we know well that playing with the storms in Florida is bad for health and shooting them with a rifle doesn't work. Anyway, in that day the storm was rampaging with a 150 km per hour wind, showering rain and 15 meter waves over the doomed fleet and trapped it in the channel. 11 of the 12 ships, the heavy galleons, were either wrecked or sunk to the bottom. More than 1,500 sailors and passengers succumbed to the wrath of the nature. Spanish authorities quickly raised a salvaging party and managed to recover a small portion of the lost treasure. The pirates were that fast as well to nose out the disaster, yet scuba diving was not much developed back in those years so most of the treasure was left to slumber in peace. Two of the ships still remain unfound, but if we wonder whether they are worth searching for, According to rumors, the ship called San Miguel, which survived the disaster due to being much smaller than the galleons, was carrying two billion dollars of today's value, alone. Hidden Treasures of Israel A nation so ancient yet very small like Israel have always been a subject of invasions by its powerful neighbors. This turned into a reason for the Israeli kings to learn how to hide their fortunes so well that nobody will be able to find them for thousands of years. Maybe just in case if their families survive to make use of them one day. During the past century, researchers have assembled more than 900 manuscripts written in Hebrew and partly Aramaic languages found in the Qumran caves located about one and a half kilometers west of the Dead Sea. Most of the scrolls appeared to be parchments made of animal hide known as vellum, but there was one special scroll that grabbed the attention of the archaeologists. This scroll was written on metal, copper mixed with about 1% tin, and unlike the other scrolls which contained literary work, copies of Hebrew scriptures, some rules and beliefs of particular groups, the copper scroll contained a list of 63 places around Israel 
hiding gold and silver with estimated value of 1.2 billion dollars, which means literally metric tons of these valuable metals. For instance, just one single location on the Copper Scroll describes 27,000 kilograms of buried gold. Although the deciphering of all of the words in the scroll is not an easy task, researchers simply don't know what some of these words mean. Most of the vocabulary in these documents is not found in the Bible or any other text with ancient origin. It may be possible that the vocabulary is very technical and wasn't meant to be understood by the common folk even in those times. Some of the described geographical locations are unknown in our modern time. Many have specific names we never heard of or some of them no longer exist. Some researchers believe that the treasures belonged to the Temple of Jerusalem and were hidden before its destruction. According to some legends, there is a possibility that several of these treasures have been found by the Knight Templars and became the source of their wealth. Still, there are individuals or groups searching for them, maybe for decades. Will they ever be able to locate them? I guess this is only a matter of time. Nazi gold train. There are a lot of stories that at the end of World War II, the Nazis loaded a train with gold in order to transport and hide it instead of giving it to the Allies. The German military officer Herbert Klose was caught and interrogated by the Polish secret police. He told them that in mid-November 1944, the chief of the German police in Wroclaw asked him to help citizens secure their valuables due to fear that banks would not be safe enough when the Red Army arrives. The police collected gold, jewelry and arts for safekeeping and stored them into chests made of iron which were hermetically closed with rubber seals and left unmarked so nobody would guess what is inside. Klose said that the plan was to move them to the mountains and hide them but he got injured and couldn't participate in this task. The other officers went without him, buried the chests in a few places, then concealed the entrances. This happened just a few days before the end of the war. The train was sent from Wroclaw to Wawbjeh, though it never arrived. According to the legends, it simply disappeared into the mountain tunnel somewhere between the mentioned towns. Many theorists imply that these tunnels were part of the Rize project, supposed to comprise more than 200,000 cubic meters of tunnels, of which less than 100,000 are known. In August 2015, two men appeared claiming they possess information about the location of the Nazi gold train obtained from an old man on deathbed. The two treasure hunters settled negotiations with the Polish government, and request a 10% fee for anything discovered based on their information. The government agreed to the terms and secured the area outside of Wolbjik to start the investigation of the site, but the results showed that the buried train full of gold doesn't exist. Though, one question comes into mind. Were they looking for it in the right spot? What if the German officer was right? What if in fact the train was unloaded and the chests were buried into the mountain? Awamaru Awamaru was a Japanese ship which was requisitioned and refitted for auxiliary use by the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War II. In 1945, the Awamaru was employed as a Red Cross relief ship, carrying important supplies to American and Allied prisoners of war in Japanese custody. She was supposed to be given safe passage by Allied forces, and Allied commanders issued orders to that effect. Having delivered her supplies, hundreds of stranded merchant marine officers, military personnel, diplomats and civilians boarded her for safe transportation at Singapore. It is believed that the ship carried 40 metric tons of gold, 12 metric tons of platinum and 150,000 carats or 30 kilograms of diamonds and other strategic materials with total worth of 5 billion dollars. Other and maybe more reliable sources state that the cargo was more likely nickel and rubber. There were witnesses in Singapore who saw the ship was being loaded with a cargo of rice and sacks, although 
The same evening the docks were allegedly cleared and soldiers were called in to first unload the rice and then reload her with contraband. Her course also matched with the last known location of the fossil remains of Peking Man, a Homo erectus skeleton, which were in Singapore at that time and were priceless in value. The ship departed Singapore on March 28, but was intercepted late at night in the Taiwan Strait by the American submarine, the Queenfish, which identified her as a destroyer. The Avamaru was sailing as a hospital ship under the protection of the Red Cross and under the agreed rules, she disclosed to the Allies the route she would take back to Japan. The torpedoes of the submarine sank the ship. Only one of the 2004 passengers and crew, Kantora Shimoda, survived. He was the captain's personal steward, and it was the third time in which he was the sole survivor of a torpedoed ship. What a luck! During the 80s, the Chinese government spent hundreds of millions of dollars in a salvage mission, but with more than 10,000 dives, they found nothing. However, hijacked communications by US intelligence tells the story of Avamaru offloading its precious cargo in Singapore well before sinking, maybe as a part of a strategic plan. Whether on the bottom of the sea or purposely hidden somewhere in Singapore, the treasure still remains unfound, along with the bones of Peking Man. Flor de la Mar The Flor de la Mar, or the Flower of the Sea, was an enormous Portuguese carrack and one of the largest and most beautiful carracks of its day. The ship was not used only for trade, but also as a battleship as it participated in the Portuguese conquest of Ormos and was also present at the battles of Diu and Goa. In 1511, Portuguese set their focus on the Sultanate of Malacca, which was one of the wealthiest kingdoms in the world at that point of time. The expedition was successful. Malacca was incorporated into the Portuguese overseas empire and its riches were waiting to be transported to Portugal. Flor de la Mar was chosen due to her large capacity to bring the booties to the court of the king in Lisbon. However, loading the ship to her maximum capacity was making her difficult to maneuver in dangerous waters. Along with the plundered treasures of Malacca, there are rumors that Flor de la Mar was transporting a large tribute from the king of Siam to the Portuguese king as well as all of the personal fortune of her captain. This was the largest treasure ever assembled by the Portuguese navy, which unfortunately never made it back to Portugal. According to a report of sailors, the ship was sailing along the coast of Sumatra when she was caught in a storm. An attempt was made to seek refuge on the coast, but the ship was wrecked on a beach. As a result, the ship broke into two, and its back, which was stuck in the sand, demolished by the waves. Based on Portuguese annals, Flor de la Mar was also carrying jewelry and precious stones. Among the artifacts were two lion-shaped brass oil lamps and a magical bracelet of the Maharaja of Shah Bandar. A small portion of the treasure was later recovered by the locals and the Portuguese, but a large amount of it was believed to be sunk into the sea. The region is said to be zero visibility diving area with a muddy bottom and a very high currents, thus making it extremely hard to locate the scattered valuable items. The total worth of the lost treasure is supposed to be more than 2.5 billion dollars in our time, although there are rumors that this wreck will never be excavated due to the fact that Malaysia, Indonesia and Portugal all claim ownership of the treasure. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button down there so in this way you can help my channel grow. Currently, my time for research and creating videos is limited, but I'm planning to upload more frequently to stay in touch with you guys. Have a nice day and see you next time.